Hey guys, so the iPhone 10 easily by far the most highly anticipated product of the year and also the most expensive phone of the year. And they don't even give you a quick charger in the box. Apple, what the fuck? So let's start with design. Um, when I started seeing renders and leaks, I started to get a chubby. It's like, or no, let's be realistic here. <laughs> this is the first time ever in the history of iPhones that I was this excited for an iPhone launch. Um, all metal and glass build gives you that I'm better than the rest of you feeling. I mean, it's a sexy, sexy looking phone, except for that camera bump. That's fugly as shit. But the overall size to me in my hands is simply perfect. Um, I've always liked the size of Samsung's S series of Galaxy phones, but within the past few years, I've started to really dislike that infinity display because of all those false positive touches that Samsung keeps saying it's fixed, which is bullshit. With the iPhone 10, we get an edge to edge 5.8 inch display, which provides a shit ton of screen real estate while still being totally manageable in the hand. And if it's still a bit of a stretch for you, you've got that super duper handy reachability feature where you just swipe down under that little home button bar, whatever the hell Apple calls it. And since we're on the topic, um, that 5.8 inch OLED almost 2K display is stunning. Apple's created this color gamut that's not too saturated when compared to displays like Samsung's AMOLED displays, but it's not washed out at all, like when compared to the Pixel 2 XL's more natural look. I almost have no complaints, almost, if it weren't for its annoying as shit auto brightness. So like outdoors, I find myself having to manually crank up the brightness to max when just sitting watching TV at night, it's usually dimmer than it should be. And when in bed, it's usually too bright. I mean, obviously that could just be me complaining, but I've also seen posts from other TechTuber friends of mine claiming the same thing. So maybe it's a real problem that Apple needs to address before I drive over to Tim Cook's house and blast a fucking spotlight at his bedroom window while he sleeps. Okay, so the home button's gone now. That's not coming back. So instead, we simply just swipe up to get back to the home screen. And when jumping into your recents list while in an app, you just swipe up and to the right. At first, it was new and cool to me, but after a few weeks, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> but hey, you might actually like it and find it easier than the plain and simple navigation buttons like on Android. So now let's chat briefly about Face ID. Cool? Yes. Practical? Yes. Convenient? Hell yeah. Slower than a fingerprint reader. Yup. Now, while I'm happy Apple got rid of those retarded bezels and brought their flagship phone into the present, finally, I really wish they'd have given us a fingerprint reader on the back instead of removing it altogether. I think Face ID is really cool and works pretty good but it still needs some improvements. And not unlike fingerprint readers, there's times where I have to try more than once to unlock my phone, which is fine for now. It's how long Face ID takes to detect, register, and finally unlock the phone that makes the unsuccessful unlock attempts super frustrating. With a fingerprint reader, it instantly tells you if you need to try again. And if you do, it takes a fraction of a second to detect, register, and unlock. With Face ID, it takes about one second, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have to reattempt one or two more times, you start to get irritated pretty fast. But when it works well, it works well in low light, no light, and even from angles sometimes too. So when it works, it's like magic. The stereo speakers, while they aren't both front facing, they do provide a stereo experience and they do sound great. They don't get as loud as other phones with stereo speakers, both front facing and with the front and bottom configuration like on the iPhones, but they get more than loud enough. And again, I personally think they sound fantastic. Now I wanna talk about all this AR bullshit Apple's pushing. Okay, so here's my opinion on the matter. Apple's implementation of AR on the iPhone 10 is probably the best I've seen in any smartphone currently on the market. But just like I thought, no one gives a shit, especially me. That's not to say I didn't have fun playing some AR games and measuring my dick size with the AR distance measuring tools, but half the people I talked to, like regular people, not tech reviewers, didn't even know it has AR capabilities. And when I showed them what it could do, their response was like, that's dumb. <laughs> Now the cameras on the iPhone 10, just like almost every iPhone of the past, is one of its strongest features. Images just look awesome. Objects are in focus more often than most Android devices I review. Colors look beautifully natural. Images are clean and clear and always sharp. It even has better than most flagship phones in low light too. The new portrait mode works well with the subject of the picture having nice natural looking skin tones with nice bokeh in the background. 
but even with its fancy ass sensors, from time to time I'm still seeing a blur between the edges of a subject and the background. So basically foreground and background separation still needs a little work. And you know, when you look at portrait pictures from phones that are hundreds of dollars less than the iPhone 10, you start to feel like a bit of an asshole for paying so much. <laughs> but the iPhone 10 is the only phone right now with that badass studio lighting effect you can play with after the picture's been taken. With the exception of one or two of the studio lighting effects, it works well, like really, really well. Now, I still and probably always will prefer having a dual camera setup with normal and wide angle cameras instead of what Apple calls its wide angle and telephoto cameras. But I do prefer a telephoto camera as my secondary over what Huawei has done with its normal and monochromatic cameras. I just don't give a shit about black and white photos. I just don't. And I know at least 90% of you guys feel the same way. But yeah, the front and rear cameras on the iPhone 10 are absolutely balls to the wall fantastic. I just wish the front facing camera didn't sometimes blow the fuck out of highlights as much as it does. But that's an easy software fix that I'm still waiting for just like quicker face ID unlock speeds. Um, battery life on the iPhone 10 is seriously impressive. If you have any doubts about its battery life, just put them to rest. This thing gets stupid good battery performance. My day-to-day -day usage uh, changes quite a bit. Sometimes I spend all day at home working on videos at my computer, so usage gets pretty low. But other days, I'm out of the house and away from a charger for at least 12 hours while relying on my phone for you know GPS, music, streaming, um, some YouTube videos, heavy web browsing, and photos. So on a heavy usage day, I'll throw it on the charger at around 12 p.m., maybe 1 a.m. before I go to bed, and I'll have around 15% left, sometimes more. And on an average usage day, I can easily make it to the next day and well into the afternoon. With light usage, it'll last me two full days. And no, I'm not full of shit. I have no skin in the game to make that up, just reporting what I've experienced. So at the end of the day, the iPhone 10 is a sick phone. It's got, in my opinion, a beautiful design, although the polished metal on mine is starting to get scratches even inside a case. It's the perfect size, it's got phenomenal cameras, great battery life, great internal hardware, and some really cool tricks up its sleeve. I just wish it was running Android with those navigation buttons and other various improvements instead of iOS. And I wish it was several hundred dollars cheaper. I just don't believe it's worth a thousand dollars or in Canada here, it's like $1,500 or more, which is just absolutely fucking ridiculous when compared to other Android devices that are just as capable. By the way, quick shout out to Caseology for sponsoring this video. You all know Caseology. They make tough but simple and sexy cases for pretty much every major phone out there. They sent me a bunch of cases from their iPhone 10 line and easily my favorite is the Parallax series. Soft to the touch but durable TPU with etched gripping on the sides with a flexible plastic bumper around the edges covers all your bases when looking for a protective case. Now I've already dropped my iPhone 10 a few times from like shoulder height and as you can see with all those scuffs and marks on the case, aside from the metal band wearing away on its own, my iPhone 10 is still in perfect condition. Um, check out the link in the description below to take a peek at what Caseology has to offer and keep your eyes peeled for my favorite cases for the iPhone 10 video where I'll be giving away a bunch of Caseology cases. But I don't know, I guess that does it for this one. I'm really curious to know which parts of my review you agree or disagree with. Maybe I'm just bitching and whining, or maybe I've raised some good points. Drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Well, that's it for this one. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.